welcome to Hey Scan. I'm Bob Scanlon. Padres win tonight, five to nothing. You sent me a lot of emails tonight. I figured we'd take a little time and do some of our video email answers. So let's get things started. First one is from Armand. Hey, Armand says, look, I know the Padres have 16 shutouts this season, yet they only have one complete game. Why won't Bud Black let the starters go a little bit deeper and finish up some of these games themselves? Armand, Bud's got to do a, a lot of juggling in trying to keep both the starters and the relievers healthy. Now, we all know about Matt Latos being on a pitch or an inning limit this year. Obviously, Clayton Richards throwing a lot as well. Bud Black, I think, has done a fantastic job of doing a nice balancing act of getting the innings in for his starters without using them too much and also not burning out the bullpen. He's got to try to keep those guys sharp. Doesn't want to burn out the bullpen as well. So he's done a pretty nice job of juggling like he did tonight, allowing Clayton Rich to go five or six innings, then using four or five guys out of the bullpen. Keeps them sharp without getting anybody burned up. Uh, Bill wants to know, hey, Johnny Damon gets put on waivers and is claimed by Boston. He rejects the trade, claims that he wants to stick with his teammates. Why would a player want to play for a team that waived him? You know, Bill, basically every player gets put on waivers after the July 31st deadline. It's the only way that a team can trade that player. So it's customary for the team to put every player through waivers. Once a player has, has cleared waivers, then the team can trade him. They do it to everybody, so it's certainly not any kind of a slight against a certain player. Now, if a player, of course, is picked off the waiver wire, then the team has a chance to do, do a trade with that team that picked them off the waiver wire. But if the guy clears waivers, they can trade him to whoever they want. But it's certainly not any kind of a slap in the face of the player. Uh, next one is from Jerry. Jerry wants to know, hey, Scan, if a batter hits a ball and unintentionally drops his bat in front of home plate, then the catcher stumbles over the bat and is unable to make a play, what is the ruling? Jerry, my understanding on that is going back to rule 6.05H in the rule book, which basically says if a batter drops the bat and the ball hits the bat, it's okay. It's still a fair ball. The difference comes in when a batter throws his bat, and if he throws his bat and it becomes an interfering thing with a player making a play, then that batter's going to be called out. So if it's unintentionally dropped in front of home plate, it seems to me that the catcher's responsibility to avoid that bat as long as the batter has not purposely try to interfere with the catcher. Otherwise, fair ball, catcher has to make the play. Uh, Jim wants to know, hey, what happened to the post-game player of the game? Jim, when uh, Cox Communications put new video boxes into people's homes, there were some software issues. People were trying to place their votes for player of the game. The votes weren't going through, so Cox Communication is, is trying to get it fixed, and we'll hopefully have uh, player of the game NAVIC question uh, back up and running within the next few days. Glad you missed it. Appreciate it. Uh, Brad wants to know, hey, Scan, please explain the spotlight sign that Miguel Tejada always gives to the dugout. Well, Miguel Tejada invented this, and he calls it the spotlight. It goes like this. It's not a claw. It's supposed to be a spotlight, basically saying, hey, job well done. The pressure was on you. You were in the spotlight situation. You got the big base hit. You, got the, you made the big play. Hey, man, put a spotlight on you. Way to go. It's a way for, for uh, Miguel to give props to some of the guys. And I guess one of the rules is if somebody gives you the spotlight, boom, you got to give them the spotlight back. It's a fun thing. The guys are having a good time with it, a way to acknowledge a nice play and uh, keep things loose during the course of a long season. Uh, Richard wants to know, hey, dude, I got tired of watching Clayton Richard pitch tonight. He gets the ball and immediately throws it. He works so quickly. What are the pros and cons of working fast? Well, obviously, the pros are if you're working fast, you don't allow the batter to get himself comfortable in the box. And secondarily, you keep your fielders behind you, and they're sharp, and they're ready to go. They're on the balls of their feet and ready to make plays. If you work slowly, a lot of times the players behind you, they'll get relaxed. They'll start getting on the heels of their, of their feet. They won't be able to make as many sharp plays behind you. So it's certainly to your benefit if you can work quickly. Now, there is a balance. If you start working too fast as a pitcher, obviously, you can rush through your delivery and lose your command. And we've seen that happen with Clayton Richard at times with runners on base. I thought tonight, though, he did a pretty nice job of at least working out of some tough uh, situations that he created him for himself with two outs. But uh, it's certainly something, hey, in general, you want to work quick, but you don't want to work too quick to damage your mechanics. Uh, next one is Jerry. Hey, why do relief pitchers always use the stretch even when there are no runners on base? Um, basically, it's because most of the time relief pitchers are coming into a game with runners on base, and that's the primary position that they're working out of, and obviously the position they're working out of with the game on the line. Some relievers feel that by trying to work on the working out of the windup, it's too much for their mechanics. It can throw their, their mechanics off from pitching out of the stretch, so guys choose not to do it. Now, there is a balance because some guys feel like they lose some of their velocity by working out of the stretch exclusively.
personally, when I was working out of the bullpen, I liked going through a full windup with nobody on base. But I was sometimes a starter, sometimes a reliever, so I wanted to try to keep those mechanics going. But I certainly understand why some relievers who only work out of the pen want to work out of that stretch position. And we've seen plenty of guys that still throw hard, 95 to 100 miles an hour out of the stretch position because they have those consistent mechanics. Uh, Marty wants to know, hey, I've noticed that almost every time your beat throws the baseball back to a pitcher, he double clutches. Does he have the thing like Mackie Sasser? No, I don't think so. And we've seen your beat do this where he, he double clutches a little bit, just a little timing thing. I don't think it's anything major to worry about. Uh, just a little timing thing to make sure he gets the ball back to the pitcher. We've never seen him make a bad throw to the pitcher. Certainly hasn't affected any of his throws to uh, second base and throwing out base runners. That's kind of an interesting story. Dale Murphy, the story goes, was originally a catcher in the minor leagues, but had a real big problem. Whenever a runner tried to steal second base, instead of throwing the ball to second base, he would actually hit the pitcher on the mound with his throw down to second base. So they finally said, enough of this. We're getting too many pitchers hit, and they put him into the outfield. Certainly haven't seen any issues like that with your V. Uh, final one, John and Cindy want to know, hey, is it a rule that the home team's dugout are always on the first base side? No, absolutely not. You'll see home plate, uh, excuse me, home team dugouts on either the first or the third base side. And really, it's just a matter of convention. Hey, the home team grabs whichever one's more comfortable. In the old days, sometimes one dugout would be larger than the other, or maybe it wouldn't be in the sun. They didn't want to get cooked during a hot summer day. Or sometimes maybe it would just be they'd take the one that was closer to the third base coaching box if the manager of the team was going to be coaching third base and didn't want to run quite as far. Uh, so it, it certainly comes down to what's more comfortable, comfortable for the home team. That'll do it for tonight. Thanks for joining me on Hey Scan, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.